Okay, this sermon is entitled, Calvinists Do Not Believe in Eternal Security. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 7 reads, O Lord my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me, lest he tear my soul like a lion, rending it in pieces, while there, that once a person is saved, they have eternal life. And we see this concept in John chapter 4. Let's go ahead and turn there. John chapter 4, take a look at verse 14, and it reads, But, what, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Now we see three things here. We see number one, the water that Jesus Christ gives us is not a natural type of water. It's a supernatural, preternatural, a, an ethereal, a divine type of water that will quench our thirst forevermore. And we don't have to worry about, you know, recidivating back into a state of, you know, thirstiness because this water is eternal. And it promises us that we'll never thirst. That's eternal security. It makes note of the fact that he gives it to us. It's a gift. And it will spring up in us unto everlasting life. Now that's eternal life, eternal security. Now, rumor has it amongst theologians and theological circles that Calvinists believe in eternal security. But I've got this quote here that proves that they don't. Let me go ahead and grab my notes here. Hang on one second. And what Calvinists actually believe is a phony version of eternal security. They believe that you have to persevere to the end. And I don't have the quote, but I'm going to just go ahead and, based on memory, just kind of, you know, recite what the quote was about. It said that every one of God's elect, so-called, will persevere and finally be saved. Now, what this tells you is that they have not trusted in Jesus Christ to save them immediately, like the Bible says, turn over to John 3.15, Okay, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. What happens at the moment of faith? You get eternal life right there. Now, these people, these unsaved Calvinists, they have not trusted in Jesus Christ, the finished work, and what he's already accomplished 2,000 years ago at Calvary. They're trusting in themselves to finally make it, to finally be saved. Now, that's not eternal security. That is the same thing as what the Arminians believe, except they just word it differently. Okay, the Arminians would say you lose your salvation. Calvinists say you prove you never had it or, or you just weren't saved to begin with. It's the same outcome. They both go to hell. And this debate between Calvinism and Arminianism is a debate between the unsaved. Because there's a third option. It's called free grace. Now let's go ahead and look at some verses here and make it very clear that it's impossible to think or to know or to deem or to surmise that people will endure to the end. You can't know that. Okay, that's why the gospel is, is based on what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. It's done. It is finished. It's not based on what we do. Turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and look at verse 5. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. The first part of the verse makes it clear. We should not be judging anything before the time. How can you say, I'm going to persevere to the end? How do you know that? Do you have a time machine? Are you clairvoyant? Now, let's turn over to a verse that makes it clear that whenever a person is saved, they're preserved. See, I don't believe in the perseverance of the saints. It should be called the perseverance of the ain'ts because they're not saved. The perseverance of the saints is false doctrine. It's of the devil. It's preservation of the saints. Turn over to Psalm. Let me find the verse. Psalm 37, and look at verse 28. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. Okay, so what we have is we have three systems here. We have Calvinism. They believe in a perverted, false, apocryphal, pseudo-fake, you know, man-made version of eternal security. One that requires you to persevere to the end. Arminians don't even believe in eternal security at all. They have conditional security. You have to you know, maintain it, and you can't lose it and all this. 
Free grace believes in true eternal security, once saved, always saved, meaning that once you're saved, you'll always be saved no matter what happens because it's a promise of God. It's based on God sealing us, God preserving us, God not forsaking his saints. Okay, that's what, that's what free grace people believe. We believe in true eternal security. Calvinists believe in a false version of it, and they're not worthy of being people that claim that they believe in eternal security at all. They don't deserve that title because they don't believe in eternal security. Now, I've heard Calvinists say they don't believe in once saved, always saved, and that's true. They don't, because they're not saved. And once saved, always saved is synonymous with eternal security. They mean the same thing. Now, let's turn over to a few more verses and make this clear, and then I'll close. Because I'm just sick of all this junk, all these people claiming that they believe something they don't. They're liars. <clears throat> Free grace people are the only ones that believe right on salvation. We're the only ones who are saved, if that's what you've always believed. If you've always believed wrong, if you've always believed in the tulip and the Arminianism and all that garbage, lordship, you're not saved. Period. <clears throat> now, John 5.24 makes it clear. It reads, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. You notice it's a immediate thing. It's not something you, you're going to get later. It doesn't say you'll, you'll finally get everlasting life at the end. No, you have it now. Okay? And shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. That's called transmigration. You go from a state of death, in, 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 this, in this sense, spiritual death. You know, you're, you're dead in your sins. You're passed from that death unto life eternal life. Okay, so the Bible teaches eternal security all the way through. Saved people have no problem believing it because my sheep hear my voice and I know them, you know, and that's, if you don't believe in eternal security, you're not one of his sheep. You're a goat, you're a liar, you're of the devil, you're a false prophet, and that's the way it is. Okay, let's take a, take a look at one more verse, then I'll close. John 11, verse 26, And whosoever liveth, and believeth in me shall never die, believest thou this? Now, if you're a Calvinist or an Arminian or a Lordship, your answer would have to be, well, no, I don't believe that. I believe that I will die if I don't persevere to the end. Or I believe I will die if I don't repent of all my sins. Or I believe that I will die if I don't live the good life and obey the commandments and do all these, do all this grueling, taxing travail, or whatever they believe, whatever they're adding, all this works. Their answer would be, no, I don't believe this. But her answer was different. It says, she saith unto him, yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ the Son of God, which should come into the world. Now, he's asking her if she believes in eternal security. Because that's an equivalent to, to believing that you'll never die. Okay? She says, yes, I believe that. She's a true believer. So, this is not a side issue or a secondary or tertiary. Or, this is not an issue like that. This is a serious issue that we need to be taken seriously. And Calvinists do not believe in eternal security at, at all. So that's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.